I wish I knew this earlier. So you're a young artist and you've been dreaming about this since you were two. Or you're a new artist and you've got great ideas. What should you be doing? How do you stand out? And how do you make art your career? Welcome to the Art Mentor. My name is Sean. And as somebody that has taught thousands of young and new artists just like you, friend, how would you like to know exactly what habits will make or break you? Because this advice is going to be game changing. I'm going to tell you that the death of most artists is that they're going to think too soon how do i monetize this and friend i just need to let you know this just because you can make art doesn't mean that you can and should monetize it and this is especially important if you're a young artist here like if you're below the age of 21 or 18 then i really don't recommend you do that and here's why because it's going to distract you from your purpose it's going to distract you from your passion too many people try to follow and chase the golden idol like they really are overall too focused on initially what do I do? How do I make money? How do I sell this? And how do I get that? Oh, I need to diversify what I'm getting. And I need to do this. I need to open up a sticker shop. I need to do commissions. I need to do this and that. You as a young or new artist, your only sole purpose is to just keep on doing everything that you love. You really should only focus on like what you want to do. Like for me, like when I was in high school, I wasn't focused on how can I get commissions or how can I get clients, y'all. I was just focused on what I do, what's really fun for me. I used to make like comics with myself and my friends. I used to love to make fan art. I used to love to make my own characters. Like that is so valuable and you will grow and those will be the seeds that will eventually uh, sprout and take root and they're going to produce dividends for you later on down the road. But do not chase the golden idol first. Now, can we talk about how your artwork currently looks right now? Like honestly, what's your current satisfaction level with it? When you compare yours versus other people, especially people that you look up to, you ever look at it and you're just like, man, this is woof. I don't even know how to fix this thing. And I mean by that, the majority portion of any artwork is just a total mess. And that's okay, because I want you to adopt this mindset, and this is what I've always taught people, is this idea of you work mess to success. And that should lower a lot of barriers for you. And y'all, it is such a delusion to think that every single step of what you're making is Instagram worthy. And I really blame social media marketing for that to make you think that that is the case, but that is not the case, y'all. Just real talk here, honestly, like 75% of your artwork, you're probably not gonna be happy with, okay? And it's not in its best, most presentable form. But then if you really wanna level up, Here's some really big ticket info for you. It's the last 10%. Just when you think that you're done, work more. Just work one more hour. This is something that I started to do years ago and my artwork's grown so much from it too and I wish I started to do this earlier. Have you ever said the phrase, I'm done, like I'm done with this? Here's what I wanna let you know about that. That is not a factual phrase, that is an emotional phrase. But if you wanna get past that, if you wanna actually get from mess to success, you have to work through the last 10%. Now looking around at every artist that you know, maybe they're in your friend group or in your class or just online and maybe you're all in the same Discord server or whatever. When you take a look at them, right? Do you ever think to yourself like, why are they so much better than me? And what do I have to do in order to get better than them or be as good as them even, right? Can I please tell you the number one secret to success? And this is my personal one. This is something that I have always done. Y'all just have to outlast your peers. And this sounds a little depressing, but I'm gonna lay a big statistic on you, but 90% of every artist that you'll ever meet will stop making artwork roughly within the next five to 10 years. And that varies a lot. A lot of people drop off after high school. A lot of people drop off after college. And sadly, about 50% of people that go into an art career drop off within the first five to 10 years of it too. So my number one secret to success as being an artist is that you just have to go longer and go stronger than them. Y'all, I'm gonna let you know this. When I was in high school, I was never the best artist in my class. When I was in college, I was also never the best artist in my class. There were people that were way better than me and I used to have the same thought process that you did, friend, too. So y'all, here's the number one thing. If you keep art, as your priority in life, you will outlast everybody. And especially if you love it and you're following the tips throughout this video, you're gonna kill it. That's all you gotta do. Remember that just because you have early success, that does not guarantee sustained excellence. Remember that. How long does it take you to make your artwork? Like, are you somebody that can spit out something in a half an hour? Is it, Are you somebody that needs to take 
eight hours? Are you somebody that's working for 20 hours on an artwork? Or do you work that long in your artwork? And then you look back and you're like, man, what happened here? Like, how do I ever have any type of a chance? Time is irrelevant. That journey is so golden. It is so necessary for you to actually grow into the artist that you want to. I'm gonna tell you this, every artist that you have ever met, that you've ever idolized, that you've ever seen online, they went through this phase too. You have to put in that time. Y'all, if I could go ahead and give you an analogy, like a first person shooter game, it would be this. A lot of young artists, y'all think that you have to be a sniper. Like you just camp out in a perfect spot and you wait for your target, boom, headshot. Don't be like that. I want you to be the player that drives a freaking tank through a building, blasts everything, runs in with a shotgun and starts throwing grenades everywhere. I want you to be that person. Don't worry if it's taking you too much time. Don't worry if you're focusing on a, B, and C in your artwork, and it's taking you a lot of time. Just do it because through doing that, you're gonna learn over time what works and what your process is like, and then you're gonna eventually get to the point where you're gonna start to evaluate everything. That's when your speed will ramp up. That's when your efficiency will kick in. And if you don't do that, or you try and shortcut that, or you try and just focus on speed, it's not gonna get you there. You're just gonna look for shortcuts that will still make you feel unfulfilled. The next tip I have for y'all is to make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button, y'all, because I put up lots of content like this every single week, and I would love for you to continue to grow. And if you could throw me some love back, I'll keep throwing it your way too. Now, make sure you start looking at this. When it comes to your tools and equipment, how are you investing into that? You can go out and you can buy a $3,200 ultra display drawing tablet. You can go out and buy the best iPad and an Apple pencil, and it will not make you a better artist. You cannot expect tech to fill the gaps in what you're actually able to do and what you know to do. There are way too many artists out here that are getting frustrated and they're thinking that, you know, the magic silver bullet to vanquish all of their fears and anxieties and their lack of skill just because they don't have the right tech, y'all. If you're interested in doing traditional art, start cheap. Like go ahead and just go down to like Walmart and get the cheapo brushes and pencils and markers, okay? Start with that. If you're a digital artist, start with a very simple drawing tablet. Y'all, I started out with just a simple Wacom Bamboo Create, $89, okay? And I started out with that. I don't use that anymore, but I'm gonna tell you this, on my current drawing tablet, which is not that and much better than that, I can do that on my original one. The skill translates into whatever tech you use. It doesn't work the opposite way. Y'all, my number one piece of advice for you is do not ever go into skill debt nor financial debt in order to try to be the artist that you want to be. Instead, what I recommend you do is start cheap and grow and then grow and then grow and then grow as you level up, as you start to get more business, as you start to get more success, as you start to need that and you're able to comfortably support it, then you're ready to go. Have you ever fallen into this trap before? What do you think is a spirit animal of the successful artist, of the professional? You might say a wolf, a bear, a tiger, a lion maybe, right? I say no. I say the hermit crab. Yes, the mighty majestic hermit crab is what I would like you to embody and channel as you are growing yourself as a young or a new or a struggling artist. Be a hermit crab, y'all, and here's what I mean by that, is I want you to, instead of thinking that you have to do all of these things and become a jack of all trades, you need to widen your net, you need to diversify your interests and diversify your income and all that, y'all. Just do one thing. Find one thing that you love above everything else and just focus on that. There's just too many artists where if I ask them, hey, what do you really love to do? What are you trying to make it in? And they'll be like, well, I do pet portraits and I do portraits and I also do not safe for work and I do furry and I do Dungeons and Dragons. And I'm like, whoa, 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 bro, pump the brakes. Just focus on one thing. Do that one thing very well and then move in. Just like the hermit crab occupies a space, it occupies a shell, and then it grows out of it and it assumes a new one. Then it grows out of that and assumes a new one. I basically did this with my entire life too. First thing I did was I became an art teacher. Then I went ahead and I opened up art commissions. Then I went ahead and I got good at art commissions. Then I went ahead and I opened up a YouTube channel. Then I went ahead and I opened up a Discord channel. Then I went ahead and I opened up my own mentorship. You see how this works here, y'all? You can grow into what you want to do and all the things that you want to do, but you can't do it all at once. So be the mighty hermit crab, y'all. Now, as you're going down the road of your artistic journey and you're growing and everything, 
One of the things that you're definitely gonna come to recognize is that it's really hard to get there alone. So invest into a community. This can be obviously, you could have your local friend group, you can have people that you meet up with at local cafes and stuff. You can be at one of those groups that like draw and trains or whatever. But listen, y'all, let's also get out of the dark ages here because some of y'all watching this, you might be in a rural community, you might be uh, in an area where there's not a lot of people around you, or heck, you might even not like the people around you. Get out of the dark ages, y'all, and get online. Find some really great communities that you can invest into that, with people that are going to genuinely help and support you. And when I say genuinely, that's the key term right there. Like get in with people that are going to actually give meaningful feedback, meaningful advice, and meaningful support to you. And not just come on in, guns blazing, tearing you down, because those people suck, right? Don't they? Have you ever encountered the people that are just overly harsh? So with that, here's what I wanna recommend to you, friend. While you're getting that, make sure that you're giving it too, because one of the worst things that happens to artists is when you degrade into the spiteful, jealous, envious artist that looks at other people's work and you dismiss it and you put it down all because you feel insecure about it. Don't be that person, y'all. Make sure you're giving it while you're getting it and get it while you give it at the same time. Make that a reciprocal element of it, okay? So invest into those friend groups. And now if you're like, okay, Sean, well, I don't even know where to go. Go on Facebook groups. Go on Reddit groups, check out DeviantArt, check out different other groups on like Discord. And if you want a really great Discord channel to join, let me tell you about mine. It is the art community. You can find it right here down below. And it's an awesome place for y'all. We're a bustling little community and I love all the growth. Go ahead and find your tribe. It's gonna be great for you, I promise. Now, can we please talk about the biggest, scariest boogeyman to all young and new artists and struggling artists right now? And I can't go through this video without addressing AI. You're probably a little nervous. You're probably a little bit afraid. Hopefully not though, if you've been watching my content for a while, because you really don't have anything to be worried about with it. But I just need to let you know this friend, that AI for you is gonna serve as a false God. If you are expecting to somehow launch your professional career with AI, if you're expecting it to fill the gaps in your knowledge, that is just not gonna happen, okay? And you're putting, again, an over-reliance on tech to do what instead you need to do. The number one thing that I think people fall into the false notion of when it comes to AI as a young artist is that somehow there's going to be a skill substitute. And that just can't happen, friend, because follow me on this example. Let's say that you were hired by a AAA game studio and let's just say that they said, hey, artist, I'm gonna pay you $120,000 a year and uh, I need you to do all of these concepts, I need to do all of these renders, I need you to do all these iterations, okay? It is inevitable that you will hit so many brick walls that you will not be able to surpass if you don't have skills. Y'all, hard skills are never going out of business. And I mean that you're gonna hit that wall daily because you're gonna expect technology to fill in the gaps of what you instead don't know how to do. Instead, focus on your skills. At no point is AI going to take that away from you. Here's another big thing for you too. If you're really nervous about this, you need to tap into what a machine does not understand. And the number one reason that people like our work, that they buy our work, that they consume our work, has nothing to do with image quality and has everything to do with your storytelling ability. I actually made an entire video, and I'm gonna link it right here down below because I really need you to watch this, on everything that machines will never be able to understand and are only achievable by a human being, an awesome human being, like you. Do not be worried about this, but also don't give into it too. If you've ever thought that you have to adapt to this, I'm just gonna tell you this, that there's nobody out there within the art sphere that's actually telling you you have to adapt to it. The only people that are saying that are tech and marketing bros because they want you to get on board their little hype train. Don't fall into that, my friend, and also don't fall into the despair. I've talked to a lot of artists that are really dismayed and discouraged about it, and you don't wanna be that person, friend. You deserve better, and trust me when I tell you this, that human art is never going out of business, and I'm telling you this as somebody that has been in this field for a very long time. You can do it, you can push past that barrier. It is not an obstacle, it is not an excuse. Don't fall for that trap, friend, because I believe in you. A reality that you will face is that inevitably, throughout your journey, throughout your growth, throughout your development as a human being, you are going to face challenges. And whenever I talk to young artists, whenever I talk to people in my own mentorship too, they'll always say like, well, Sean, look, I, I had this and I, and I died and work and I was feeling so stressed and I just couldn't do it, Sean. I just couldn't get it done this week. I'm sorry, but it just couldn't happen. And I just wanna encourage you to this, friend. 
I want you to be more passionate about your possibilities than your excuses because your excuses are so easy. All you got to do is say it and that becomes real and honest for you. And that puts you into the place of inactivity. Instead of that, what if you channeled that? What if you redirected that energy into doing the things that you want? You had a sucky week? Go ahead and make art from it. Did you have a lousy day? Go ahead and make art. Get that out on your paper. Y'all need to think about this from a cathartic view, meaning that you're going to use art in order to release those emotions, in order to get that out. Because otherwise, what are you doing by sitting down and playing four hours of video games every single day? You're not getting anything out. You're not relaxing. You're numbing. Really learn the difference right now between when you're numbing and when you are making actual work towards addressing the issues that you're going to come up with in life and you're going to face. Every single time that you go forward in life, just going to let you know, life is going to push back at you and that is a challenge. It's not to keep you down. So you need to think about how you are going to use art as your mode of coping with it positively so that you don't get downtrodden and you don't come up with excuses because the worst thing y'all can do is fall in love with your excuses. As you come into the artist that you want to be, as you're growing, as you're making all these efforts, y'all, you're going to constantly hit this wall of look at everything I have to do and look at all of this work that I have to do. And you're gonna need to put in more efforts, okay? But here's the thing I just wanna let you all know. The number one thing all you have to do is just be consistent with it. And don't make excuses for when you can't. If you are solely focused on just making efforts, like literally 20 to 30 minutes a day is more than 99% of most people will ever put into in their artwork. And if you put that into a place where you're gonna think about the compounded effects of you doing that over the course of years, man, you're gonna be light years ahead of everybody. You don't have to be the person. Have you ever heard of people that like sit down for six to eight hours a day and you're thinking, well, you know, Sean, I love to be an artist, but I, I don't have that kind of time. I'm not rich. I, I, I don't have anybody that takes care of me. My spouse uh, doesn't allow me to stay home while they work and I just do my art. Listen, that's okay. And most people aren't gonna do that anyways. But you can, no matter what circumstance you're in, you can still do it. You can still make your artwork and don't be ashamed about it either. Do y'all have to go ahead and take jobs that are non-art related? Good, go do that. You have to sustain yourself. You have to survive as a human being, don't you? So go ahead, be consistent while you're doing that. There's no shame in growing into your art business. There's no shame in having art as your side hustle either. There's no shame at all in art just being your hobby as well. And you just wanting to get better just for you and for no monetary gain. That's all good too, friend. But you need to build, the number one thing you need to build is momentum. Because once you harness momentum, it is really hard to stop and you get addicted to it in a really positive way. So get addicted to that positive momentum by just putting forth consistent efforts and just following through with that. Because most artists that you know, they will not do this and that will be what holds them back and propels you to the future that you want. And anytime that you think about, you ever think about, releasing the reins on that momentum friend. Just think about this, y'all. What are you giving up? What possibilities are not going to be opened for you? What other opportunities might come up that you might not have access to because you pump the brakes a little bit. Once you harness momentum, y'all, ride that stallion because it's gonna be great. How many of y'all watching this have ever heard a burnout? How many of y'all are listening to some of my advice and you're like, well, Sean, you know, I like that, but you know, real talk, I gotta take care of myself and I gotta make sure that I don't burn out. There are way too many artists that are so afraid of burnout that they won't even begin to try and light the candle. So what you need to do is not be afraid of burnout and make that an excuse because are y'all doing this right now? Are you making the excuse of like, well, you know, I like to do a little bit more, but uh, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be uncomfortable or I think that might be too much or I might be a little too tired here. My advice is real clear cut and simple. You have to allow yourself to burn before you burn out. Here's a great example, y'all. I used to be a boxer back when I was in college, okay? Imagine, how do I get better from that? Well, I have to fight better people. But there are some artists here that I could put into this example where all you're doing is you're fighting toddlers. How much better are you gonna get? Let's say that you're playing an RPG right now too. 
how good are you going to be? Like, how are you going to get to level 99 if you only fight the noob level monsters? You're not, right? You're never going to get to the point that you want to be at if you're only pushing yourself where you are comfortable to. You must allow yourself to burn before you burn out. You have to push yourself to just being a little bit more uncomfortable, a little bit more uncomfortable, a little bit more uncomfortable. Imagine you wanted to be an Olympic bodybuilder, but for 10 years, all you did was you just curled 30 pound weights. Like you're not gonna get big and swole, are you? It's the same thing with your art because you're not flexing your art muscles enough, y'all. So make sure that that's not your case. So now let's talk about what skills do you need? Like what's most important? Because this is the number one thing on your mind. If you're curious about what do I need to know? Where should I grow and put my attention to? How do I beat AI, okay? Here are the most important tips that you need to know and skills you need to develop. I made a whole video about it right here. So go ahead and check that out because this is where your future is going to begin by learning this stuff right there.